In this question, we're going to look at how to give individuals and teams access to an existing workbox. By default, when a workbox is created, automatically the members of the team that own the workbox will gain access to the workbox. So if, for example, I went into the information systems team and created a workbox underneath that team, by default, anyone that is in the information systems team would have access to that workbox. What we're going to show you how to do in this particular question is how to add additional people, how to invite additional people um, into a workbox. This can be useful if, if a workbox, for example, represented a project or a policy that you were working on or amending. What you might want to do is invite experts or, or um, other people with useful information from different teams to come and work in that workbox. It might be that you want them to view information in the workbox, so we can do that. It could also be that you want them to come and edit and contribute content into that workbox as well, so we can do that. Changing security in this way is not a technical process. It doesn't involve programming, it's actually just filling in a form. So it's going to be quick and easy to do. In this demonstration, we're going to show you three different things. We're going to show you initially how to view a report of who currently has access to a workbox. Because before you invite additional people to a workbox, you need to know who's been invited already. So we'll show you how to view that report of who has access to your workbox. We're also going to show you, having viewed the report, how to invite individuals to a workbox, so one person at a time. And we'll also show you finally how to invite a whole team of people to your workbox so they can contribute or view content. Here in the demonstration environment, I'm logged into Izzy already, and at the moment I'm, I'm on the Me page. I'm going to start by navigating over to the My Teams page and heading into the team site where my workbox is stored. I'm going to click on the name of the workbox to actually go inside of the workbox itself. And now we're going to start thinking about the security settings. So we're going to go up to the workbox tab in the ribbon and we find a button for view all involved. So this is my report that I mentioned before. This tells me who has access to this workbox. It tells me the owning team, so who currently owns the workbox and the members of that team. It also tells me individuals and groups of people that have been either invited to view the workbox or to change um, content within it. So what I'm going to do now is take a quick look at the two buttons that allow me to invite groups of people or individuals into the workbox. Let's deal initially with inviting groups of people. When I click on the button there to invite a team or a group of people, the first thing it's asking me there is what's the team of people, who are they that you want to invite? As you start to type, it actually offers you a complete list of teams to choose from. So you can't just make teams up, this is not a completely custom thing that you just make up off the top of your head you'll be selecting from the organizational structure and the teams that are within it. As well as selecting the team that you want to give access to your team site, you can also control the level of access that they'll have. So can they just view information, are they a visitor, or are they involved, at which point they can not only read information, they can also add and edit information as well. Finally, at the bottom of the form, the email configuration, you can actually edit the email. So this is the email that goes out to the people that are being invited to come and work within your workbox. So within here, we can add information. The only bit you probably don't want to change in there is the, the little box that says workbox URL. That's the bit that will dynamically give them um, a link back to the workbox. In my case, I actually decided to cancel that process. I decided in the end I didn't want to send that out. Let's take a look at the form, the next button along here, for inviting an individual into the workbox. So this time, it's not about the teams or groups. It's actually about typing individual people's names in. So we get a slightly different interface on the form. There is a name check button, the, the, the face with the tick next to it. So I can actually type in a name and do a name check. There's also an address book available here, which is your global address book. As long as you know someone's first name or last name, you're going to be able to find them pretty quickly. Again, you can define whether this person is involved, in which case they'll be able to modify and contribute content, 
or are they visitors, again, just uh, read-only? So again, in this example, I've decided to cancel. I didn't want to send it, but actually I've just hit the kind of invite button, and those would have been sent out. What we've focused on here is, at the end of this demonstration, just to confirm, before you do change any security, before you invite any individuals or teams to come and work in a specific workbox, remember initially to go to the view all involved, which is the button we've just left this focused on now. Remember that allows you to see who currently has access. So before you start inviting lots of extra people, it's a good idea to keep, keep going into this view all involved, and that shows you who currently has access already. So between those three buttons there in the workbox tab in the ribbon, we can not only see who has access, we can invite entire teams of people and individuals. So the good news here is this, this is much simpler than it's ever been before. So again, you don't need to be a member of the IT department to manage and, and control security.